um, today I'm talking about um, something that we use here at my college and something that uh, um, I've put together that's really nice and easy to remember to aid people with 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 making their um, making making the induction process much smoother and that is by adopting a particular mindset the the hypnotist the hypnotherapist can can make the inductions uh, um, really really successful and fluent and effective um, just by adopting a particular mindset and allowing their language to be sort of fed and hung off uh, of this particular set of principles which uh, you know if the set of principles are inherent I think um, it's gonna be very very difficult not to induce hypnotism Hypnosis ultimately, and there's sort of five prongs and five five key themes and areas to, to be bearing in mind. Um, the first is that of expectancy, and that is that, that as as hypnotists we we create expectancy within the client. First of all, we have expectancy. We model expectancy ourselves, as um, as Clark Hull said, uh, anything that assumes hypnosis creates hypnosis. So it makes a lot of sense for the hypnotist or the hypnotherapist to assume that the hypnosis is going to happen and um, um, very useful then for the, the, the individual, the recipient, um, to, to perceive that, uh, that, that, that the hypnotist just assumes um, um, that, they're, that they're going to be hypnotised. And what we're doing here is with the expectancy in and of itself sets the frame for hypnosis beautifully. We punctuate language with the kind of presuppositions that we that, that we know and love and uh, we know the outcome. Both, both us as hypnotists and the individual that we're working with uh, knows the outcome. We, we, we have expectancy. Um, and we explain that the process is collaborative. It's not, it's not just wholly my responsibility, not wholly the responsibility of the individual, but that it's collaborative, that it's something that we're going to be doing together and we create expectancy. Accordingly, so they have a degree of responsibility to, to 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 do as they've been instructed to do throughout the process, and so on. Second of all, then the, the attitude, of course, um, and both us and our our manner, the the, the, the hypnotist's manner and attitude, the tone and instruction um, um, is is. Ideally, we want it to be progressive and positive. It doesn't mean that we have to be all hardcore whoopee doo all of the time, um, but that we are appropriately motivated. Um, um, and this is going to help us to create trust. Our attitude by being trusting um, 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 in the client, we trust that they're capable of doing everything. Um, we're going to be perceived as being trustworthy ourselves as well. And with regards to the attitude, we want a kind of relaxed assuredness to occur. Um, um, as, as Emil Kuei, one of Emil Kuei's uh, uh, rules with regards to, to, to teaching auto-suggestion, for example, um, was always to be very wary of the effort error. Uh, that is, trying too hard or wanting the outcome too much. So therefore, just having a good, relaxed, reassured attitude throughout the induction process is really important. Um, and simplicity, uh, uh, it, you know, both with language, both with the structure, so that everything is easy to understand, it's easy to follow, and it's going to ensure congruency. Um, um, and and you know, the, the things that are, that are too convoluted or, or, or overly complicated tend to be quite difficult to follow and could potentially hamper the process of, of induction. Throughout the induction process, we want to be on the ball. That is, we want to be paying attention, being attentive be there. I think one of the most important uh, um, um, qualities of really effective hypnosis professionals is to be present, be, be there with them, let them know that uh, you're, you're, you, you are there, you're, you're paying attention to them, you're engaged with them um, and, and enabling them to, to see that and, and feel that they can be safe with you, that they can uh, 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 trust you and that, that you are a credible professional and so on. Also, by being on the ball, you get the opportunity to, to ratify, uh, to use ratification and to, to feedback their ongoing process, you know, give them feedback with regards to what's occurring. But also, we get an opportunity to, to revivify, uh, and to revivify means to bring back to life. And I know that whenever we speak about revivification, it makes it sound like we're Arkwright on open all hours. Um, I mean, if you'll excuse the old school UK cultural reference. Um, um, but when we revivify, we bring back to life and we have an opportunity to, to, to bring back to life uh, numerous psychological processes that the client has, has encountered before that 
that are going to be useful. They're going to lend themselves well to the induction process, occasions when they've been focused and calm and, and, and engaged and so on. Um, um, by being on the ball, we also get an opportunity to utilise and, and, and make use of both the environment and the things that are occurring for that individual and for us and so on. And when we're on the ball, we get an opportunity to to encourage them, and that is to, 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 to let them know that they are doing well. Um, um, and that kind of encouragement and their perception of themselves as being effective, of course, is going to create self-efficacy. And the more self-efficacy that we develop throughout the induction process, the better things are going to be. We're going to, uh, again, reinforce and create that increased positive expectancy. And of course, finally, um, um, as, far as, as far as our, our sort of underlying principles for, in, for effective inductions are concerned, we have that sort of non-verbal stuff. Um, I'm talking about intent here, you know, for example, intent, that we have the right intention, um, not just in terms of a, a positive regard, um, an unconditional positive regard, as Carl Rogers was talk about, but that our intention is, is good for them, that we want them to do well. We want them to, 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 to benefit from the effects of what we're doing and that our intention and their intentions dovetail, they meet, they, 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 they run parallel to each other and that they, that they enable one another and we have good, good intention feeding what we do that we get a comfortable level of eye contact throughout the period, you know, as long as it's applicable. Um, um, that is, that, you know, if you've asked them to close their eyes, of course, difficult to get eye contact. Um, um, but in the early stages, while you're educating and preparing and setting the frame and so on, that, that you're both comfortable getting eye contact, um, that there is congruence. And, and, and I mean, I mentioned this again, but that um, and what you are speaking verbally matches the things and, and the way in which you are communicating non verbally um, that non-verbally as well you get an opportunity to demonstrate that you mean what you say that is you know show that you mean it show that you care show that you are effective as a professional and so on and and when I talk about non-verbal ideally for me I, I never really want people to be completely slouched and zonked out I want them to be receptive I want them to be attentive of an upright posture and not be slouched um, um, in order that we can really sort of access inspiring states and uplifting motivating states uh, rather than just kind of being too zonked out um, listening to well music uh, dribbling down oneself and so on so a really neat way to remember this particular uh, underlying set of principles is to take the first letter uh, uh, of each of these key themes, expectancy, attitude, simplicity, on the ball, and non-verbal. Uh, uh, you know, people that say I have uh, ego issues, I have no idea where that comes from. Uh, there we have it, a really neat little uh, model to help with the underlying principles of inductions, make them more effective by adopting all of these things. Okay, best wishes.